Hello, hello, hello. There it is. <clears throat> I don't know how that happened. I usually leave everything the same. This should be better now. It looks like the audio levels, is it quiet? It looks like it's okay. I don't know how that got reset there. But I'm gonna wait a little bit. Get a couple more people to join in here. So we're gonna do good now, thank you. So we're gonna do now this week. It'll be different than going over submissions because I really didn't. I really had one and didn't think over the emails too well. It's been really busy, so uh, I kind of want to go over a fall lawn program and answer anyone's questions while I go over it. Um, kind of about what they should do with their lawn or what they're seeing, um, and just ask any questions while I go over what you should do with your lawn in the fall coming up to this time of year. I made some good notes. I wanted to make a video about this, um, but I filmed it and the audio was really bad, so I have to refilm it. Um, but I'm going to go over it today, so that way we can talk about it live as well. So I'm excited about that, and then what I'm going to do is I'll type it up here, and that way you can all see it instead of me just talking about it. Maybe I should do it in like bulletin points. Let's look at a decent size. Hey, no problem. Sorry, I'm uh, I missed last week and I'm not producing the videos. Things have been a little bit crazy, but got to do what I got to do and to, to make it happen. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Going going through some happy things so uh dealing with that and staying busy with work so i'm trying to make as much happen but i really do like doing this and it's a good getaway so i'm glad i can do this and i'm glad uh you guys can join me as well it's uh really exciting so i'm gonna wait here this one might be a little bit shorter i'm gonna try to cut this one to about 30 minutes because i haven't even eaten dinner yet so i like to ramble on um <laughs> I'm going to try to do uh, a bit less rambling. So, we'll wait. It's pretty, uh, not, not many people in here, but maybe as we get it going, that's why I'm going to kind of type up what we talk about as we go on. So that way if someone jumps in late, we can kind of go over the main bulletin points of what you should be doing with your lawn in the fall time. I made a little... Got some notes for me. But we are going to wait here. And hopefully next week we can get back to the... I just have enough time to to, uh, to prep everything with the emails. I think I only had one or two. And I just have the time to get it all together. So I figured this would be a good way to still make something happen as well. So I'm going to wait here. I usually go live for about five, five six minutes. So... We'll see, and uh, I think we'll go ahead and just get started in about 10 seconds here. So this will be your fall lawn program for your warm season turf. Um, th this program will pretty much work for any warm season grasses. So St. Augustine, Bermuda, Zoysias, uh, Centipede, Bahia. I don't even consider Bahia turf, but it'll work for all of them. Um, so what you're going to do, fall is going to be your last big push of fertilizer for the year. 
So uh, this is pretty pretty much the last time you're going to be doing nitrogen, um, you know, real nutrients and feeding the lawn. Um, you know, the rest of the winter, if you do add nutrients, um, you should be just doing potassium, sea kelp. You can do micronutrients. It's never wrong. Um, but you should stop the nitrogen, no need for phosphorus, um, just giving the lawn some potassium and that's all for root development. So that's really what we should be focusing on here in the winter time. And a good fertilizer is going to be, now I recommended like a 2211 in the springtime. So what you can do is do a, a 2211 at, oh. sorry for my keyboard. It's the clickiest thing in the world, I know. So like a 2211 at half the rate. I'd recommend like a higher, uh, potassium fertilizer but for homeowners they are harder definitely harder to find so if you still have something left over from what you used in the spring you can still reapply that but you're just going to want to do it you're just going to want to do it at a lower rate so you could still use a 2211 at half the rate for your last round now my biggest recommendation would be like a would be like a, I'm not the best at typing, would be like a 10 to 10 at a normal rate. That would be something I highly recommend as your last push or a, uh, oh, where did my, uh, why is it all, why'd the size change? Gosh, I am not good at this. There we go. Or a ten zero ten. Sounds good. I use a six zero eighteen from Lesco, so that's slightly lower rate. So I'm okay to use it at full strength or cut it in half. Um, I I would still cut it. Um, because you just don't want so much nitrogen down. That, that's the that's the whole thing, um, especially from a wet year because of fungus. Um, now, especially if you're in Central Florida and you're doing this in September, which we're going to get into, you'll be you'll be okay to probably do that ten zero eight at a full rate. Um, but just make sure as the night temperatures start to drop. Uh, just be careful because the only main concern with that nitrogen is really causing that brown patch fungus to flare up at night and it can cause it to really grow a lot quicker and larger than it should be in earlier too with that much nitrogen. So that's that's the main concern. So maybe I would do like a third of the rate would be like a fair assessment to say. There, I can do it 8 10 10 8 10, 10 is great as well. Um, just just uh, the phosphorus you have to be careful with. Um, because phosphorus is what kind of causes the allergy blooms. So there's a little bit of an environmental factor in there, but also uh, phosphorus causes um, grass to grow laterally. So it's great for bare areas, but it also produces the seed pods. So for um, like your St. Augustine grass, it produces seed pods, but they're not very effective. Same with zoysia. Zoysia does seeds, but it's better than St. Augustine, but the seeds don't do too much. So the problem that you can have with the 8 10, 10 the nutrients will be right, but you can cause the weeds to seed like crazy. So you can have a lot more issues with weeds coming into the fall and um, coming into the fall and uh, the winter time. So... Oh, I am low in P. So that I mean, if if, if you're if you're low there, um, you can use a little bit more. That's fine. Just if you have weed issues, be careful because that's what can cause the weeds to germinate at a very high rate. So that that's really my main concern there. But if you're low there, you can add a little bit more. Just do it at a lighter rate to get it to where it needs to be. But um. 
yeah, so like a 10 to like a 10 to 10, 10 0 10, those are really what I recommend at a full rate to use. Like I said, if you have some stuff left over from spring, use it as at a lower rate. We just have to watch the amount of nitrogen going down um, because you can get the plant, you can put too much nitrogen in there. Now, if you're doing this way later, using nitrogen like in a December and we get a freeze that can do damage and really stress the lawn when you're doing it in September and October which is what I'm recommending here as a fall program you're not going to get a frost that's going to damage you're just going to cause a, a lot of fungus so speaking of that um North Florida should be around September. That's when you should be planning your last final push. Sorry, I'm awful with the keyboard here. I'm way better at typing on my phone. So Central and uh, South Florida, you should be around in the October areas. So North Florida should be September, Central and South Florida should be October. And there you go, Jason. Um, if I didn't type it in gibberish, you probably would be able to read it before the question, but I literally butchered a very simple sentence. So, but um, that's a good time. More Central earlier October, uh, you know, more South later October. So those are good times. And if you're not in Florida, that's okay. You can check on a, on a, on a temperature map the rank the temperatures in these areas and kind of gauge it from that from where you are at especially in texas got a lot of people from texas um and we have very similar climates so just kind of you can look at it at a map of the temperatures monitor that and then repeat that from where you're at so that's a really good time to do your last round of fertilizer of any of the fertilizers that i listed above there now a big thing is if you miss fall, applicate. If you miss fall application, do, do not apply it late. You can cause damage to Skip it and apply in the spring. So if you, uh, I'm sorry if I'm jumping ahead, but can we do pre-emergent and fur on the same day? I, I'm actually going to get to that. Um, here, that is a really good question though, and I really do, and I do cover that. Um, that's actually going to be uh, coming up really soon. I'm, I'm going to cover the pre-emergence because it gets a little tricky actually with that. So, if you miss the fall application, if you miss your September October deadlines, we start getting into you know Central South Florida early November, you're going to be okay. Uh, us North Florida guys, get that down in September. You miss that. Be very careful with the nitrogen you put down. You're going to really cause some fungus. We're already seeing brown patch fungus flare up. And October hasn't even begun yet. And, th and I'm still recommending it's the time to put down your last bit of nitrogen. So um, be really careful. But if you're late and it starts to get uh, uh, cold... And it starts to get cold... Skip it. Do not apply late. You can cause damage. Just go straight to your potassium. Go to sea kelps, 
potassium um, don't add nitrogen you can totally make up for it in the spring so you're totally okay don't feel like you really missed something uh, uh, too big that's gonna be detrimental to your lawn you missed a round of nutrients you make it back up in the spring you're fine add potassium through the winter um, now I mean I, I pretty much uh, the main reason Okay, I didn't spell that right, but that's okay. My nitrogen will damage the turf if a freeze comes and will feed brown brown patch fungus. So that's the main reason why. Um, is it okay to apply SOP all winter long? Um, I think you asked me about SOP. Elaborate, what What are you considering uh, SOP, soil? Uh, I know, I know. I think I think you said it before. I just don't refer to it as SOP. Do you just elaborate on that, Jason, to make sure I know what you're talking about, but high nitrogen will damage the turf if a freeze comes and will feed brown patch fungus. That's why you absolutely do not apply late. Skip it, skip it, skip it. Uh, okay, yeah, potassium. Potassium is good. That's exactly what you want to do all winter long. After, after your uh, September and October rounds of your last bit of fertilizer, wait, do, do nothing in November. You can do some potassium in December, but uh, December, January, February, potassium. That should be your winter program. So potassium is your best friend. It doesn't release hot. It doesn't feed funguses. It, it can't damage the turf. Potassium is great, uh, Jason. So yeah, feel free to do that anytime. Now, um, let me see here. I make sure I do this in the proper order. I didn't. I don't like the way the, the exact order I wrote this down. So let me see. I got a question. Okay, perfect, Jason. There. So now here's the trick for the pre-emergence. So, uh, when you want to apply pre-emergence, apply pre-emergence when soils drop below 70 degrees uh, for a few consecutive nights. Now you're going to be wondering, how do I know where that is? So check this out. To find out when, go to greencast slash soil temperature map oh so if you go to uh, okay do you guys have your potassium product out um we actually do have it ready to go. We are just waiting. Everything is ready to go. All we're waiting is uh, the proper shipping uh, container. So for the liquids, we're waiting for bottles and labels. And for potassium, we're waiting for labels and proper bags. Um, because right now, all we have is 50 pounds, and, and, and that's really a lot. Uh, everything with all the shipping going on is a little bit crazy. Is it okay if you didn't apply at half rate, applied um, 
it, uh, ward, it is okay, but be, be very careful with the fungus. So you're going to need to really monitor your lawn for brown patch fungus. And let's do here. Well, we're right here on this site. Perfect. Look at it. Oh my gosh, it comes right up. It's also known as large patch fungus. You're not, no, no one's wrong either way. Is that what you, can I zoom? Well, I, I, I think you can see this pretty clearly. This is what it can look like. So if you put down a, a lot of fertilizer, this can really start to flare up. So get your fungicide ready, especially from this very cold, uh, very cold uh, winter that, or sorry, very, uh, not cold winter, very wet summer that we've had. This is going to really start to flare up, especially in North Florida here. Um, I'm We have used very minimal nit nitrogen. So as long as you're monitoring your lawn and you have your potassium ready, you're okay. But see, as a professional company, we only come six times a year. So after we do our last round, I'm not going to be in your lawn for two months. So as long as you're there monitoring it, you'll be okay. Um, but get your fungicide ready. When you see this start to flare up, go ahead and, and apply. So, but, um, so for your pre-emergence, they're going to be at a different time. So, um, apply pre-emergence when soil temperatures drop below 70 degrees for a few consecutive nights. Go to Greencast slash soil temperature map to find out, uh, your soil temperatures in your area. I have a 15015, um, from Lowe's. Is that okay? Yeah. 15015 would be great. Just don't, I would use it about third of the rate, not full, not half, about a third to half of the rate and you should be okay. Um, but make sure you monitor those soil temperatures before your pre-emergence. Now check this out. You're not going to be applying your pre-emergence and your fertilizers at the same time because it's going to be a lot warmer because when these soil temperatures drop below that, it's going to be fungus city. So your fertilizer is going to come a month to a month and a half before your pre-emergent. So this is going to be around in Florida. So in Florida, uh, October to December is when you're going to see below 70 degree temperatures for several nights. Um, so of course, North Florida, you're going to be looking more towards October, uh, you know, November. And South Florida, you're going to be looking more towards September. But this is really important uh, because it goes with the germination rate of the weeds. Now, it does get really tricky because let's say you have a, a shaded area or the side of your house that gets very minimal sun. What's going to happen is those soil temperatures are obviously going to be lower than the rest of your lawn. So now as a homeowner, if you know you have shadier areas, you can kind of go out a little bit earlier with your pre-emergence in those shady areas. Because what we're trying to stop here is like poana, uh, poana grass. It's totally untreatable when it grows up. Um, and it's not a big deal because it won't really take over the lawn. It kind of just grows in the bare areas. So it's not the worst grass to have. Um, but it is annoying because it does have white little seeds that pop up and can be really problematic uh, and, and more of an eyesore. And of course, it keeps growing as your grass stays pretty stagnant. So it's more of an eyesore. So that's why it's it, it's really tough. So if you want to go out a little bit earlier as a homeowner, you're okay to do so. Um, but remember, going out with your pre-emergence, like now, um, our soil temperatures in North Florida are still in the low 80s. We're 10 degrees above. So when you use those pre-emergence, they're not going to be nearly as effective because the, the, um, the seeds to our winter weeds don't germinate until it gets below 70. So you're going to go out a month early than the prime time those seeds start to germinate. So what's going to happen is your pre-emergence is going to be wearing down as the prime time for the seeds. So you're going to get a lot less out of your pre-emergent, which is why this is so important to monitor soil temperatures. So you're going to be looking in a range about a month to a month and a half is your last round of fertilizer. And then you'll be doing your pre-emergent after. Again, you know your own lawn. If you're seeing those weeds pop up in your backyard or the side of your house 
earlier than the rest of your lawn, then you know, okay, maybe the time I do fertilize the side of my house, those soil temperatures are around there. Um, and I can do my pre-emergent here because it stays cooler and doesn't get as much sun. But only you're going to know that with your lawn from trial and error. So that's why it's really great season after season. Notice those things and your, learn your lawn. It's a lot harder as us as a professional. Those things get tough because we can't, it's not, it does not cost effective uh, or effective to our customers to go out early. So we wait for these soil temperatures to drop, um, but that's going to mean in shady insides of house, unfortunately, those weeds aren't going to be really controlled because they already germinated. So make sure to check, check that out. Now, a big thing is, Don't apply pre-emergent in thin, bare, and thatchy areas. Pre-emergents put a layer over the soil and they stop any from roots. So here's your soil. You apply your pre-emergent. It puts an invisible layer over the soil here that stops roots from penetrating through that first layer. So if you have grass with roots already in it, you're good to go. That's why it doesn't affect. But if a new root, whether it's a seed that drops or it's a new root that grows across, won't be able to penetrate that layer, uh, that invisible layer the pre-emergent has, ca has caused until it slowly wears down. So if you're trying to get areas to fill in and you're applying pre-emergence over them, they're not going to fill in. Now, as your fall pre-emergent, it's not as big of a deal if you get a little thin areas with it because your grass really isn't filling in in the fall. Um, in South Florida and stuff, you know, it, it still can be. It does grow year. It does pretty much still consistently grow till January and February. Some a little bit, um, but that's a really big thing. Now, again, that's that that's up to you know you as as a homeowner um, what you want to do. But thin and bare areas. Uh, I don't recommend applying pre-emergence because the weeds won't grow there, but neither will be grass and you'll be stuck in that zone of having the same thin areas. Now make sure in the in the springtime, only apply to thick turf. Now the biggest no-no is thatchy areas. Thatch areas. I guess thatch areas makes sense. I like thatchy areas. It says it says it's not a word. It's gonna be it's it's a word today for me. So um, so, uh, in thatchy areas, uh, let's see here, uh, thatch, thatch, thatch. Now I'll make sure I get the right thatch. St. Augustine thatch is very, very different. There's not a good pictures here. I wanted to get a good, uh... So thatch is when your lawn is very squishy and spongy. So this is gonna be thatch. See how tall the grass... Oh, I wanted just to zoom into the picture. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I have to download it. Sure, we can save it to whatever it needs to be. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So thatch is... Thatch is this zone right here. So when you walk on this lawn, it would be very spongy. If you have an extremely spongy lawn, that means you have a lot of thatch. You have a lot of dead runners because in most lawns, it's dead grass. Here, it's those dead runners, stolons that cause our thatch. So if you have a lot of this and your roots are out, because you see here, the roots are out in the air and they're not in the soil. You have this zone of roots in the air before it hits the soil. Now what happens is if you apply a pre-emergent in the thatchy area, the pre-emergent's going to actively hit the root and it's gonna stunt that, that root and can possibly cause it to die. So you can 
damage your lawn by applying pre-emergent to Adachi Air and it can cause the lawn to be very chlorotic when it gets that yellowish look of three pre-emergent that that airs can cause that because it does damage and stunts the roots. Um, there's no time to ever apply pre-emergence in thatchy areas. Um, like I said, thin and bare in the fall, I don't recommend it, not the end of the world. Thatchy areas, you can really do damage and have very chlorotic areas the rest of the winter and that makes it more susceptible to funguses and other issues. Um, so if you have thatch, that's a major problem and really should be something that you should get on top of because, excuse me, because um, it can cause some bad damage and, and there's no way to you know replace it. If you damage those roots, you may have to wait till spring for them to recover or you may have to resod certain areas. And if you're not sure if it's thatchy, just skip the area. If it's spongy, very spongy, it's that G. Can Berdyme be applied to flower beds and bush areas that usually surround the house? Um, Dimitri, um, I, I don't. Now, Berdyme, now uh, this actually leads into my next thing. Um, that is a great pre emergent uh, for St. Augustine grass, but you'd have to check the label. So the label is the law. Um, I know it's a good pre-emergent and I'm sure it can be used in beds, um, but you'd have to check the label and make sure it's not made for turf grasses only. Um, so that would just be something, look up any product with that active ingredient, do a little label scanning and see what areas you can use it in. And if it's made for beds, then good to go. But if it's not, first off, it's you're not allowed to do it. And secondly, there's a reason, probably because it's not very effective or can damage your plants. So make sure to check. But um, there's pretty much only two active ingredients you should be using as a pre-emergent. So, oh man, That's why. Um, so, two active ingredients um, for pre emergent. Well, oh, I shouldn't do it that way. That would make sense. One is So you're going to want to uh, use, there's only two act now. These are, I, I don't recommend uh, brands or products because I don't really know homeowner brands and things like that and what people can get access to and things. So um, these are the two active ingredients uh, that, uh, that you can use in St. Augustine grass. They're the best. One's not better than the other. That's what you need to use. Now the important thing is the second part I put in, make sure you rotate each product. So don't keep doing the same cycle and same active ingredient. Make sure you rotate them to get different results to control different weeds and things like that. Now you can find a product that, that you like and works for you with these active ingredients in it. So all you have to do is type in these active ingredients and find pre-emergence with them and make sure your turf grass is on that label, which if it's these pre-emergence, it will be. Or if you're looking for beds, make sure that uh, you know, that uh, it has beds, uh, mulch beds, whatever, on that label. 
So that's really important, but that's what makes it easy that there's really only two major options of active ingredients that you can use. Now find a brand that, that works for you. If you find a brand that was very effective, don't keep using it, you know, uh, spring and fall or whatever, you know, rotate it, but you can keep that brand in, uh, you know, next year and things like that. You can do that brand every other year as long as you do a, a, every one rotate. You don't have to get five different products. Get two that you like, one with each active ingredients, and keep rotating them, making sure you're using different active ingredients uh, every other cycle. But that's that's pretty much it with that. And then again, when you use these products, make sure you're checking your soil temperatures. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it for your fall program here. Uh, it's it, it's it's quite easy. Um, with the fertilizer, just the, the, the important thing in the fall is timing. I think that's what makes the fall difficult um, is because if you're a little late or anything like that, you can cause some fungus issues um, and things like that. So that's difficult. And then same thing, you can do the pre-emergent too early or too late and just have a uh, varying results um, and it's not the end of the world especially with a lot of the winter weeds a lot of the winter weeds do not take over lawns your spring pre-emergent is a thousand times more important than your fall pre-emergent because you can get a, any post-emergent herbicide besides like poana grass and things but again that does not thick and takes over your lawn that's going to grow in your bare and thin areas and it's going to die out in the in, in the spring anyways so don't be too, too concerned, um, but for you lawn care nuts out there that really want a nice looking lawn and really want to be on top of it, do do your fall pre-emergent. Um, it, can, it can really help stop some problematic weeds. And the great thing too, when it's cool like this in the fall and the winter, you're very, it's very easy to use those post-emergent herbicides to treat the weeds because it's not nearly as hot. They're a lot more forgiving and you're not very likely to burn your lawn. Um, so... That's that's the good uh that's a good uh fall program. And oh, I don't know what's going on. And uh let me know if anybody has any questions. We'll hang out I'll hang out here for about five more minutes or unless people keep asking questions to answer any questions. But if nobody has any more questions, we'll we'll go ahead um and end this here. Um how can I get this? I was gonna say, I mean I wrote all this down. I'll save it as a file. You can email me if you if you want this if you want this write up. Email me at turforganics904 at gmail.com. That's linked in my YouTube uh, bio, um, and I will send you this no charge, three ninety nine. Um, for all, all I ask is that you like this video and subscribe and support my channel, which I'm sure if you guys are watching this you already have. That's all I ask, and I will send you this. And there's a good little guide. This is good year after year. Um, this is this isn't gonna change unless some crazy new pre-emergent comes up or something we don't know. But um, this is really good information year after year, and will be a good guide to fall back to. So now you don't have to watch my videos anymore. Um, I'm kidding. Please watch my videos. But let me know if you want this. Um, please feel free to email me. I will send it to you as a PDF. That way you have it. And anyone, again, I'll hang out here for a little bit more. MTK man, you're you're welcome. I always appreciate your support. Um, ask me any more questions or anything like that. I'm going to hang out for about three, three more minutes here. So if you have any questions, even if it's not, uh, related, go ahead, ask, ask away. I'm here for, I'm here for grass stuff. Jason, man, no worries. Uh, I appreciate, you know, y'all support through this, make, making it, making it fun and interesting. Sorry, it's a little different video, but. I, th I think I laid it out. This was kind of not a last minute thing, but uh, I didn't have my time to prep and I think I, I laid it out okay. So let's see, I think um, I got lost when we were talking about active ingredients. Okay, so let's do uh, this. So what you're going to want to do is uh, really, we could just do alright, so, so let's do Gave you potassium every month all year long. Yeah, you can't, Jason. You can never go wrong with potassium, man. Seriously, potassium is extremely beneficial and totally okay to use. So let's do. Uh, 
See, so this is the active ingredient. So this isn't a product name. No, no, don't be sorry. This is what, what we're here for, man. I, I appreciate you asking questions. Um, and I want people to ask instead for not knowing because that's when I do it. So look, so Prodiamine Pre-Emergent came right up. And then boom, here you go. You have a list of, of pre -em Let's go to shopping. Now, again, the reason I'm telling you the active ingredient, because I don't like telling you brands because then it just tells you what to do. I, I don't want to tell you guys what to do. I, I want to educate you to have the information to make these, make these judgments on your own and kind of do things on your own. It's way more fun than just saying, hey, here, use this. Do you believe in liquid thatch remover? Uh, absolutely not for St. Augustine grass. Uh, for other grasses, it may work or be effective, but St. Augustine thatch is extremely different and I don't believe it's going to be effective. And I don't even believe in the, the liquid a a aeration. I've heard some people get some results, um, but I, I think there's a lot of people, I think it on its own is not nearly as effective. So like he here we go. Here's liquid, uh, prodiamine. So that's what you just want to see. Prodiamine, prodiamine, prodiamine. That's, that is the active ingredient that's going to stop, uh, the, the weeds. Uh, the, or sorry, it's gonna, yeah, it's a be a pre-emergent, which is gonna help prevent the weeds from growing. And then from them, if you have a sprayer, you can use a liquid. You know, you go to here, very familiar with this website. You know, uh, what you're going to do is you don't wanna just buy the first thing. Uh, so target pests here. Here's here's the weed that it's gonna help you prevent. Uh, what's it for? Established turf grass, excluding golf and putting greens, lawn sod, nurseries, containers, landscape. So. Uh, you're okay there. Um, and then what we're going to want to do, uh, where is it? Uh, label. Wait. Oh, here. here's the label right here. So remember when we talk about active, prodiamine, that's what you want to make sure. Okay, it's got a active ingredient um, here. This is always the safety stuff at the beginning. WSP, it's a wettable powder. Wettable, palatable, wetter, wettable, pow, powder, soluble. So you'll put it into a liquid and it'll dissolve. So uh, do not use new plantings, blah, blah, blah. Mixing, this will tell you how to mix it. That's how to mix it in a tank. This is your per thousand square feet. Tank application. Just more mixing. Oh, look at this. This is really cool. Crabgrass seed. So th this is for... Um, a spring. This is their spring recommendation, which is really cool. This is on here. Um, use restrictions turf grass. Do not apply this in areas where dichondra, uh, conal bent grass, velvet bent grass, or annual bluegrass are desirable turf grasses. Do not harvest treated sod within 90 days of this application. Um, do not apply to newly set sod until sod is rooted and exposed edges have filled in. Do not apply to golf course. So as you can see, you're probably good here. Um, it tells you a lot more turf species. Bermuda, Bahia, Centipede, uh, <laughs> Cayuki grass, Seashore Pass Pilum, St. Augustine, Tall Fescue, Zoysia grass. Um, and then it tells you the rates. So this is going to be a really good one to use. And, and this is it. So because there's many different product names. Um, and this is actually just, just has the name in it. So there's many different brand names with this active ingredient in it. See now, what I'm going to recommend for homeowners is to do a, uh, to do a granular. So I don't know this brand. I don't know how effective this is, um, but uh, Sabercore herbicide pre-emergent. Let's make sure. Uh, this is what we want. But sometimes they couldn't get get tricky here. So it's got some uh, potassium in it. And so this has got a little bit of potassium and pre-emergent in it. That's fine with me. Now again, don't use this as your as your 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 fall fertilizer, but having a little potassium in it is totally okay. This is a, a, a granular product. So you put it in a spreader, put it out again, check, cool. This Now this tells you all the spring stuff. I mean, this is really great that these labels even have this information. I'm gonna go over a spring video, of course, because the spring pre-emergence absolutely the most important. But look at this: uh, in, in March 1st to March 20th is is uh, that's what all of them are gonna say. But here you go, same type of grasses that it covers. So you're you're totally okay to use this product. Just follow the application rates, and you know make sure the areas aren't thatchy, thin, and bare, and cover all those things. So 
that's what I mean by active ingredients. So active ingredient, make sure it's either, it's uh, the two active ingredients that I've listed here. That's when you want to make sure is in the active ingredient area. The brand, you find, you play with brands and find what brand works for you. But, um, because I, I know I know anything with this active ingredient is okay for our turf grasses. But always check the labels. Always make sure products try to add things. And again, make sure, remember, if that had nitrogen, we'll go back real quick. If that had nitrogen in it, I would say don't use it. So that's why it's really important. In the blackout area, what is the first thing I should do this weekend for my St. Augustine grass? First thing you should do, uh, okay, so we rotate those active ingredients. Yes, yes. If you use prodiamine this year, use um, use the um, di diorthro next year. So just don't use back-to-back -back active ingredients. That way we just get a little switch up. Um, so what you're going to do in a blackout, uh, depending where you're at, you're going to want to do uh, like these. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You want to do those three things. So you're going to want to do like a 2211 at half the rate. Because that's what I recommend is your spring fertilizer. So either use your spring fertilizer at half the rate or get like a 10 to 10 at a normal rate or a 10 10 0 10 is okay. That's what I would use uh, right after your, your blackout date to give it that last bit of, of nitrogen and things. You may want to go a little heavier on the nitrogen depending uh, – Central and South Florida. I wouldn't do it. North Florida doesn't have restrictions. But Central and South Florida, it, when your blackout ends in October, first thing you should do in October is go out um, with – I would do like a – you could do – a 2211 at the third of the rate or a 10 to 10 0 10 or a 10 2 10 at, at a, a total full rate um, to give it that last big boost of nitrogen and food before the downturn of fall and winter comes. So uh, I hope that answered your question and let me know if anybody else uh, has a questions. Again, I'll stay, I'll hang out for a couple more minutes, answer any last questions. Um, again, I will, if you email me, turforganics904 at gmail.com, I will send you this, I'll save this and I will send it to you. Free 99. Just make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. If I send you this and you're not subscribed, I will hunt you down and put a bare spot in your lawn. A small one. Because I don't want to hurt the grass. That's that's my only only demand. So if you don't want bare spots in your lawn and you want this, just subscribe. That's all I ask. You and man chat. No, no problem, man. Thank, thanks for your support. Makes makes fun doing these videos, and I really enjoy it. And uh, you guys stuck around with my clacky keyboard and my horrendous, horrendous uh, attempt at typing live. Probably a fear of my no, it'd be handwriting. My handwriting is the worst. That's where. That's why I wrote this. That's all I'm going to show you. The handwriting is is worse than the typing, if you could believe it. But. I'm really good at knowing grass stuff. So that's what you're here for, and that's what I got going for me. Looks like I got another question. You guys treat grass in St. Augustine? We do. We don't do all of St. Augustine. We're based in St. John's County, um, so we do do sections of St. Augustine. We do come out to the island. I don't really do anything downtown, just as a safety hazard for my trucks. It's too busy and roads are too tight and it's just too dangerous for my technicians out there. So if you're in downtown, I do apologize. Um, it's just a thing of safety for my guys that I don't want to be in crowded, touristy areas like that. Um, so, let's see, you asked... Uh, yeah, World Golf Village, absolutely. Um, I actually live in World Golf Village. This video is being filmed here in World Golf Village. So um, we are absolutely here. 
that's absolutely our service area. You can give us a call. Um, you know, give our office. Uh, oh, sign into chat. What do you have to sign into chat? I can't send you a chat. I live in Trailmark. Yeah, we have some customers in Trailmark here. So I'm gonna send you. Uh, Yep, absolutely. We'd love to come give you an estimate. I believe I just typed in um, phone number in chat. Is it really that far delayed? I just typed in um, our office number to call us, and I will myself come out and check out your lawn and give you an estimate because you happen to be in our service area. And um, I typed in a number, but... I don't see it coming up in the chat. Unless it's just really that far delayed. But if uh, if the number doesn't pop up here, just type in Turf Organics on in Google and we'll we'll pop up. If not first, second. And uh, our office number's there. Give us a call and I'll reach out to you and schedule a free estimate to come check out your lawn and uh, see what we can do for your lawn. Again, hang out for a couple more minutes, see if there's any last questions. Huh. Can't even type in my own chat. I try to send you the number. That's weird. But temperatures are cooling off. Oh, man, is it feeling good in the mornings and afternoons? I mean, even the days. But, man, it feels wonderful out. I am enjoying these temperatures. This is when this is when Florida living gets good. Cool mornings, cool nights, and I consider them cool days because I'm born and raised here in Florida. Th this temperature year-round is okay with me. I know most people would say cooler. I'm fine with uh, low humidity, high 80s, low 90s year-round. That would be paradise. So... Even in South Florida feels great. That's awesome, man. Glad glad to hear that. It's just not here because I know South Florida it can stay toasty for a lot longer. Because I get people here in North Florida that move from all over, but I get people who move here from South Florida because they're just like, man, it's just so hot. We don't really catch a break, so we just moved up up north and just get that you know a little extra time of that break from that heat, and they appreciate it. So I can understand. I'm, I'm glad it's cooling off down there as well because it can stay – uh, making it stay pretty brutally hot down there, and that does just get a little bit miserable at that point. But I, I mean, I'm okay with it. But I know a lot of people don't, don't don't like it. So glad it's cooling off everywhere. Well, all right, guys. Seems like uh, questions are slowing down. Um, this went on a little a little bit longer because I have not eaten my dinner yet. So I'm going to chow down on some dinner. I'm going to save this PDF. If you would like this PDF, please comment me. Turf Organics 904, e comment me, email me, turforganics904 at gmail.com. I'll send you this for free. And all I ask is that you make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like, subscribe, comment, and just uh, support me on YouTube. And I'll give you this free 99. So, all right, everyone, thank you so much. I appreciate you watching.